Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So today I'm here to take a look at my most favorite note that's out right now, and that's the Note 10 Lite. Now as you can see here from the color, it's pretty eye-catching. And it comes in three colors. This is the Aura red color, it comes in the Aura glow just like the other Note 10s, and then an Aura black. So three different options, and it's a little less than $500, but it has a lot going for it, like a beautiful 6.7 inch AMOLED display. It has three cameras on the back, three 12 megapixel cameras, primary shooter, wide angle, and telephoto, and a 4,500 milliamp battery. Plus it's running the latest version of One UI. So lots of stuff going on here, a lot to talk about. So let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at it. But before we do that, I do wanna say, if this is your first time stopping by the channel, I appreciate you being here. If you enjoy the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell so you can get updates on the latest videos. Now let's see what this is all about. All right, so the Note 10 Lite is a very curious device because it didn't come out in the United States. So a lot of people don't know about it, but it's running an Exynos processor instead of a Qualcomm Snapdragon 855. So this is actually running a processor that's about a year old. It's a nine series Exynos that's the same one that's in the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 international model. So if you don't know about the whole Exynos processor thing, Samsung makes their own processors, the Exynos versus the Qualcomm Snapdragon, which is what we get here in the US, and that's what's in here. And it works perfectly fine. Uh, it doesn't feel quite as zippy as my Note 10 Plus did when I had it, but I enjoy it much more than, I know, than my Note 9. So if you really like the Note 10 form factor, a little more rounded off on the edges, it's got the center cut peephole front facing selfie camera on the front, which it's actually a 32 megapixel selfie camera. And that's another thing that really intrigued me about this phone because the other Note devices have much, much less uh, high quality cameras. They have like that 13 megapixel front facing selfie camera as opposed to the 32. And that's the same in the S20. So I thought, yeah, this is pretty good. And I was curious if it would rival the 48 megapixel front facing selfie camera and my S20 Ultra, which is what I'm recording this with right now. Surprisingly enough, I've been able to record the last three or four videos that I've made with this device. So if you're wondering if you can record and make YouTube videos and shoot video with a $500 or less phone and have it turn out pretty darn good, this will do it. So I've been really impressed with the cameras. The video camera capability, especially on the selfie camera, is really good. This one has eight gigabytes of RAM, but it also comes in a six gigabyte variant. I don't really know why you want it, but it's a couple dollars cheaper. Uh, but both of them come with the handy dandy S Pen. So if you like the Note, you'll be happy to know this is fully functional and it works just as well as the Note 10 and the Note 9 S Pen. The only difference is it doesn't do all those Harry Potter magic wand motion gestures, which I gave up after like the first three attempts of trying it when I had my Note 10 Plus, so who cares? <laughs> but for you know, 500 bucks or less. You can actually pick one of these up for about $455 on Amazon right now. They normally MSRP for right around 500 bucks, but it's beautiful, it works well. Like I said, 4,500 milliamp battery. The battery life is good, but see, one problem with the Exynos processors, and people warn me about this, because I'd never had any experience with one, they're a little bit more power hungry than the Qualcomm's are. So. I expected to get probably seven or eight hours of screen on time out of this, um, and it's just not happening. I'm barely, barely getting to right about six hours of screen on time before it dies, and and that's okay. As long as I have six hours of screen on time, I can get through the day with the phone. So this will last me from sun up till sundown till I'm ready to you know kind of turn in for the evening and then put it on the charger. For a normal person, it'll probably last you till the next morning. I just use the ever loving goodness out of my phones. It's just how things work. So it's beautiful, it's nice, it's got a metal frame, but it's also the back is made out of this glass material. And I was really intrigued by that. I saw this phone at CES in January. I was like, man, I really want this phone because it's just so beautiful and it works so well. I was really, really impressed with it when I saw it there. 
and it's this glassic material it's like a glass and plastic together compound that gives it this hardness on the back. So it makes it a little bit lighter, makes it durable, but it's not quite the same caliber as like, you know, Gorilla Glass 5 and better and all that other good stuff. So it is made well, um, and it even comes with a case. So it comes with this clear case. Now the clear case you can see here, it's not really the greatest one in the world. Um, and I haven't used a clear case in a while. Um, and I forgot how much it really builds up like this grimy film on them. After about four hours of using this case, I just like, I can't take it anymore. And I took the case off and got rid of it. I actually ordered a Spigen one. Actually, I'm sorry. This is the Spigen one. <laughs> this right here is the one that came with it. So very flimsy, very thin, and, and, and that's okay because it comes with it and that's nice. What you care about is keeping your phone protected because you're taking a gamble not having a case on your phone. It also has a built-in screen protector. So you've got both of those things going for you, uh, but I would definitely recommend getting another case. The reason that I didn't get a non-clear case that doesn't have this nasty residue film, and they both have the same problem. Uh, you can wipe it off and clean it off, and like four hours later, you're right back to square one. And then like all clear cases, after about you know for four or five months, maybe six months if they're a good one, they kind of start to discolor and yellow. But when you have a phone this beautiful, you don't want to put an obstructive case on it. So I've been actually taking a gamble and carrying this around without a case on it, which is very much against one of my cardinal things that I do with phones, which is always put a case on it. So cardinal red break cardinal rule, I guess, I don't know. But it's just too good looking to put you know, a, a case that covers it up. Now, as far as biometrics, it does have the fingerprint scanner down on the bottom, and it's not the most accurate in the world. Um, here we go, I just tried twice, I'll try a third time here. All right, third time's a charm, but it does take a little bit of time for it to actually work. So we'll try this again so you can see on the screen. So go ahead and activate. That didn't work. All right, we got a match there. So it's not the fastest in the world, but it's there. I would have preferred a traditional one on the back, but as you can see, the back of the phone looks so good. I didn't really know that I want a fingerprint sensor back there. So it's kind of a give and take. And surprisingly, the ultrasonic one, unlike the S20 and S10 series, does seem to be a little bit more re reliable, but at least you don't have to mash your finger down on it. Now, the other thing is it has facial recognition. So you can use the facial recognition. You can see it's a little bit snappier there than the fingerprint sensor is. And whenever you use this, you can have it open right up into the phone or you can have it where you still have to swipe up once you unlock it. So biometrics are there. Power is there, RAM is there, 68 gigabytes of RAM, and this triple 12 camera array on the back. So I talked about this some, wide angle lens, telephoto lens, and the primary shooter. All three of them work really well. I've taken pictures with all three lenses. You can get portrait shots, you can get portrait selfie shots. You can see here in the camera example, it's, it's pretty neat. It's got a lot of different things going for it, the sharpness, the clarity. And one thing that really surprised me is what it just wasn't as uh, saturated as Samsung stuff normally is. And Samsung stuff is normally like really, really color saturated. This actually is kind of a happy medium. I was really happy with the way that it turned out. So you've got that going for it. You also have the wide angle. The wide angle takes good shots. And then the primary shooter. It's it's just a solid phone. The only time I've really noticed anything, it kind of drops off a little bit in low light. It's not the greatest low light photos, but then again, I don't really care about low light photos. So if you want something that takes good low light photos, just go get a Pixel or get an iPhone. Those are the two that are best out there right now, but you're also gonna pay Pixel and iPhone prices. For what this brings to the table, and it even has a headphone jack on the bottom. It's like everything that we wanted in the Note 10, but it's in the Note 10 Lite. And it, of course it came out a little bit later, but not spending a thousand dollars and not spending like $1,200 is priceless to me. This right here is half the price. I could happily use this as my everyday driver and indeed I have been ever since I've done my unboxing video. I'm a big fan of it. Yes, it has a 1080p resolution, but it's got a beautiful, crisp, saturated, colored AMOLED display. It looks good. It, I mean, Samsung makes the best panels in the world as far as I'm concerned when, when it comes to smartphones. It just, it looks good. And of course it's running the latest One UI. So you're not missing anything here. You've got the cameras, the call quality is great. The speaker quality is better than average. Of course, 
on this one, it only comes out of the bottom. Uh, the top handset speaker is just for talking. I kind of wish that it had dual stereo sound. I've kind of been spoiled a little bit by that, but it's just, it's a good phone. This is the phone that I really wish would have come out in the United States. And I think the reason that they didn't release it in the US is because if people saw this, if you walked into the store and you saw this, and this was $500, as opposed to the Note 10 or the Note 10 Plus, which is like 1,000, 1,200 bucks, you wouldn't buy one. And Samsung doesn't want that because they want their flagship phone to sell. But what they also don't want is for you to realize that you don't need a thousand dollar phone. This right here will do all of it. Now, does it have an IP dust and water resistant rating? No, it doesn't. But you shouldn't be taking your phone in the water anyway. I mean, yeah, if you accidentally drop it in the water, normally you would have that protection with the more expensive phone. It's not a concern for me because I'm not taking my phone near the water. Just take care of it. And it doesn't have wireless charging. I don't really care about wireless charging. If you care about wireless charging, maybe this isn't the phone for you, but at the $450 to $500 price point, that concern doesn't even pop into my mind because it's like 500 bucks and you get so much out of it. We're talking basically a Note 9 and a Note 10 body that's beautiful, has a stellar camera array, and it just works nice. I, I haven't had any problems with this phone. I like it a lot. And I would definitely buy it again. I bought this with my own money. Samsung didn't send this to me. Uh, they don't send me devices. So it's at the mercy of my opinion of this phone completely and objectively. And I would say definitely if you're interested in it, I don't think you'll be disappointed. So yeah, does it have a high refresh rate resolution? No, but most people don't even know what that is or care about it. Two, it doesn't have wireless charging or IP6A, IP67. Totally fine at the $500 price range. I think it's perfectly acceptable. So it'll get you through a day. It's powerful enough to do what you want. And then you also get the wonderful S Pen. So you can do all of your note stuff on here as well. And this is nice because on here, of course, you've got the button. You can press the button. You can take pictures with it. You can open up the camera app. So, ta-da. See, I get myself in the frame there. So pretty cool. Double tap, you can flip it around. So you've got a lot of versatility with this as well. So you get all the great, you get all the great perks of the Note without all the incredibly high price of the Note. So in a nutshell, this right here is probably my favorite phone so far of 2020. I also like the LG V60, another solid phone. You can check my review out on that. But if you're a Samsung fan, if you're a Note fan, this right here, I like it. I like it a lot, and I think you will too. So that's all I've got on my review of the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Lite. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell so you can get updates on the latest videos when they come out. As always, I appreciate you being here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.